I made a huge bracket with all of the completed trios in it, and today we are going to pit them against each other to find out who is the strongest trio in all of Brawl Stars. In each round, one of the three brawlers will emerge to face one of the other brawlers from the other trio. However, each team does not know which brawler that they will be facing. The first trio to win two of the three matchups will win and move on to the next round. Looking at the teams in bracket number one, we have the Star Force versus the Superheroes up first. And speaking of superheroes, today's sponsor has just that. Marvel Strike Force is a squad-based RPG where your favorite heroes and villains come together in a fight to save the Earth. There are over 180 characters to choose from that all have unique abilities and strengths, from heroes like the Hulk and Spider-Man to villains like Thanos. Choose your team and charge into battle. There are many different modes to choose from as well, from PvP action in the arena, alliance wars, or the sprawling campaign with a great story, Marvel Strike Force has something for everyone. You can build whatever team you want, and on top of that, you can choose the style too with the costume shop where you can get new costumes and finish enemies off in style. There are daily quests, special challenges, in-game events for new characters, and even fun holiday events that you can play through. Complete missions to earn shards and gear, which will unlock new heroes and level up the ones that you've already got. And the best part is the game is completely free to play on Android and iOS. So go check out the link in the description right now and download Marvel Strike Force. Big thanks to Marvel Strike Force for sponsoring today's video. I went with Surge in the first round because I felt like he had the best chance of getting a win against any of the three that came out and Eve has the power but those shots come out too slow and this gives the superheroes their first win. Next up I chose Max because the first round is basic interactions only. In the later rounds the brawlers can use their gadgets and supers and there Meg will be useful but until then well, she kind of pathetic. So my opponent chose Colonel Ruffs and in a very close match Max won but just just barely. This means that the superheroes win two of the three and move on to face the winner of the Retropolis Trio versus the Old Town Trio. I was playing the Old Town Trio in this matchup, so I decided to choose my worst 1v1 brawler, hoping that my opponent would choose Bull and he did. Now Byron lost, of course, but my hope was that with the other team's best brawler out of the way, I would stand a chance. So next up, I chose Piper. The enemy chose Crow and, well, this is where it all kind of ends for the Old Town Trio because Piper got smoked and the Retropolis Trio moves on to face the superheroes. In this round, the brawlers can now use their gadgets, but this time I was playing the Retropolis Trio and I chose the biggest hitter first, Bull. My opponent went with Surge, and even with putting Bull at max distance and Surge making him run around, my gadget gave me just enough health back to finish off the job. Next up, I had to choose between Crow and BB, and well, <laughs> you know me. When the fight started, Max gadgeted, hoping to use those sneaky sneakers, but she died before it activated, giving the win to the Retropolis Trio and advancing them to the semifinals to face the winner of our next bracket. Our first matchup in the second bracket is between the arcade trio versus the botanist. Now, I chose 8-bit first, hoping that I would see Rosa on the other side as it was my only real chance of beating her. Instead, I saw B on the other side. While this did mean an easy win, the next matches were going to be close, and they were. Next up, Brock faced off against Rosa, and I thought that Brock might stand a chance with his brand new buff, and he came close, but in the end, he lost by a few hundred hit points. So the fate of these two teams rested on the shoulders of Rico and Sprout. They stood there, eyeing each other down, and when the shots started flying, the winner was decided by mere fractions of a second. Sprout came out on top, sending the botanists to the next round. Their opposition will either be the miners or the shamans. Let's find out who. Looking at the brawler matchups, to be honest, I didn't see what I was liking, so I decided to get the sure loss out of the way first and went with Dynamite. And sure enough, Bo emerged from the other side, and as expected, Mike was gone before you could say, don't touch my canary. Hey, don't touch my canary. Now to even have a chance of getting to round three, I had to pick Jackie, so I did, and she faced off against Nita. And this was an easy win, but now that means that the last matchup was between Carl and Leon. And I think we all know how this is going to end. Yeah. 
So the shamans move on to face the botanists in the quarterfinals. In this next round, once again, gadgets are able to be used, and I decided to start it off with Bo. While his gadget can only tank one shot, it might be just enough, but Rosa came out on the other side and thwarted that plan as she pierced through all of it, and with the help of her gadget and star power, her health was just enough to beat out Bo. With that first loss, I needed to make the next choice count, so I went with Leon and I found B on the other side. Now, I tried to use his clone, but I kind of just ran up too fast, but in the end, it didn't matter because he still powered through it all for the win. So then there was one match left to decide who will move on to face the Retropolis trio in the semifinals, and the brawlers here were Nita versus Sprout. Now, Sprout took advantage of his star power and used the grass to activate that shield. This reduced Nita's damage and gave him just enough so that the botanist could move forward one more round. Now on the other side of the bracket, we start off with the Pirates versus the Snowtail Trio. Once again, my strategy here was to get the guaranteed loss out of the way, so I went with Tick. And Tick, like the filthy pirate that he is, tried to cheat by using his damage gear, even though it was banned, and, well, it didn't matter because in the end, Mr. P easily defeated him. Next up, I had no other choice but to go with Daryl. Now, you think this would be an easy win since he's a tank, but since we have him start off at max distance and Gale with that slow, he was almost able to take him out, but in the end, Daryl won and forced match three where Burger Lou would face off against Smuggler Penny. This was a very close match, but in the end, that meaty center of Burger Lou won and sent the Pirates packing while the Snowtail moved on to face the winner of our next matchup. In this matchup between the Rangers and the Mystic Trio, Spike and Terra were the choices, and it was close, but not close enough as Spike went down. Now I wanted to save my big hitter for last, and I thought that my opponent would think that I was going to go with Shelly to ensure a third round. This would allow Colt to win against Sandy and give Shelly an easy win. However, that didn't happen as I saw Evil Gene on the other side instead of Sandy. This match was actually really close, but Gene won by mere milliseconds, which gave the Mystic Trio the win and sent Shelly and her crew home. I played that one wrong. This meant that the Mystic Trio moved on to face the Snowtail crew. With Gadget's in effect once again, I chose my strongest Brawler Terra and her support from Beyond Gadget. Lou was the choice on the other side and his Ice Block Gadget did nothing but delay the inevitable conclusion and notched a point for the Mystic Trio. Next up was Gene versus Gale. Gene was able to activate his Spirit Slap and his Vengeful Spirits and when the match started he unleashed everything and was able to edge out Gale in a close one where Gale's Gadget didn't do anything to help him. This meant that the Mystic Trio would move on to the semifinals to face off against the winners from the last bracket. In this final bracket, we see some real powerhouses like the Gift Shop, the Junkers, and the Undead, but only one can move on to the semifinals, and we start this contest off with the Entertainers versus the Gift Shop Trio. In the first matchup, I chose Poco because I was saving El Primo. I ended up facing off against Colette, who in this first round cannot use her brand new and ridiculously strong gadget, so it ended up being very close, but Colette's shots travel faster than Poco's and finish him off just in time. Not wanting to make the same mistake I just did with Shelly, I chose El Primo knowing that he would most likely win. Spawning in, I saw Edgar on the other side of me, and when the bell rung, the fight ended up being way closer than I thought, and while El Primo won, it was way closer than expected. This meant that the last matchup between Amber and Griff would decide the winner, and it didn't take long for the entertainers to go home with some souvenirs as the gift shop trio advanced. Next up were the Junkers against the Undead. Starting off here, I chose my weakest brawler, hoping that my opponent would waste Frank on Jesse, but that turned out to backfire on me as he went with M's. That ramp up damage didn't take long to send Jesse packing, which meant I had to choose right on my next pick. I chose Pam, thinking that I would see Frank, and I was right. Pam was the only chance that I had to win, and with almost 18,000 hit points on the field, the shots were let loose, and when the dust settled, 
Pam beat Frank and set me up nicely with a Nani versus Mortis matchup. Now I know that if Nani lands all of her shots on Mortis, she's going to win, but Mortis's dashes were able to dodge some of those shots, leading to a win for the undead, sending them to face off against the formidable gift shop trio. Now I was playing the undead for this round and I chose what I thought would be a sure win with Frank. Since there was no need for stun prevention, I went with his irresistible attraction gadget and on the other side was Edgar. Even with that massive first damage, Edgar used his shield combined with fisticuffs and this match went down to the very end as Edgar just kept healing. I mean, Frank won, but it wasn't by much. Next up, I chose Mortis and his survival shovel as I anticipated my opponent using Colette and her brand new strong gadget and I was right, but even then it was incredibly close, right up to the very end as Mortis pulled out an unlikely win, sending the undead trio to be the last semi-finalist ahead in the bracket to face off against the Mystic Trio. The first semi-final matchup to see who will go to the championship is between the Botanists and the Retropolis Trio. In this round, supers will be allowed, and our first matchup was between Bull and B. Not wasting any time, Bull charges right through B's damage and with a few quick shots was able to finish her off no problem. Next up, naturally I chose Crow as not only is he my favorite brawler, but with his super and his gadget, he's quite deadly in 1v1 interactions. My opponent chose Sprout, which is a pretty bad matchup for him. Even with the shield and the hedge, Crow was able to jump over it all and take out Sprout, which means that the first two matches went to the Retropolis Trio, winning that round and sending them into the championship match. Now on the other side of the bracket, we have the Undead versus the Mystic Trio facing off. Starting off, I chose Terra with the hopes that I might be able to beat Frank and, well, I was right. Frank trotted out on the other side. However, when the match started, Frank used his immunity and just chuckled at Terra Super, stunned her, and got one point on the side of the Undead Trio. The next matchup, I went with Sandy, hoping to be able to use his gadget to make the difference. Sandy Super did provide some healing, but it just wasn't enough to really do anything and Gene could only watch as his team lost and this means that the Undead Trio is going on to the championship to face off against the Retropolis Trio. So now, it all comes down to this, the Retropolis Trio versus the Undead. Starting this off in style are the two perennial favorites. I chose Crow and my opponent chose Mortis. Now, in a real game, this matchup can go either way depending on Crow's super and in this match, it came down to just that. A perfectly timed super, or, or just lucky, but whatever, allowed Crow to leap out of the way of Mortis's bats and land dead center on him, inflicting just enough damage to edge out the victory. My guess was that the next play for my opponent was going to be Frank, and I knew that I would lose to that stun no matter who I chose, so I chose BB as my sacrifice, and I was right. I mean, she put up a fight, but when the dust settled, Frank and his hammer, or uh, Christmas tree, stood victorious. So there was only one match to go, and one of the best 1v1 brawlers in the game was on my side, Bull versus M's. Now, I would love to hype this up as a close match, but yeah, it wasn't. Even with a super and a knockback, Bull easily won, and that means that the strongest trio in Brawl Stars is the Retropolis Trio.